Hi and welcome back to the dead ball area. This week I want to have a look at Ollie Woodburn's try for Exeter against Bristol. I'm a big fan of Exeter's style of play and really admire their ability to play the game at different tempos, mixing it up in the trenches as well as using the full width of the pitch. Woodburn's try is a perfect example of the latter, but I also think it's a wonderful example of why a second midfield player who becomes so important and how effective they can be. Let's jump to the start of the sequence and break down the key elements in how Exeter pry open the Bristol defence. Bristol go early in the scrum, conceding a free kick, and Waldron taps and goes quickly. It's not unusual for a team to do this, and often teams will want to increase the speed of the game and attack unset retreating defenders close to the free kick. But on this occasion Bristol were defending anyway, and already had defenders back 10, so there's no obvious advantage to tapping and going quickly. But if we look at Bristol's defensive setup prior to the scrum, we can see that defensively they leave a huge amount of space out there on the open side, which is now exactly where Exeter are going to attack. The issue is Exeter can't just sling the ball wide into this space. They need to preserve it whilst moving forward. So they run a screen in the middle with Hill acting as the lead runner or blocker and Slade sliding into the spaces left. And that stops Bristol sliding in defence long enough to allow Turner to attack the channel outside the 13. And it's simple drawing past rugby until they are finally chased down. As we can see, Exeter are now well up over the game line. And that means they are coming forward onto the ball. And whilst Bristol has to scramble back and around. Exeter rewind and to keep the ball moving and to suck in a few more defenders, they run a punch group into midfield. Recycle quickly and then a screen in midfield to Slade again, who sends Cowan Dickey over the game line. Exeter again rewind back where they came from, and Waldrum offers himself as a short runner, but we see there's a screen pass behind Slade, who finds Turner, who simply has to draw the last man enough to set Woodburn free. It's a superb try. But I'd like to go back to the start of the sequence, and look at that second playmaker, and how decision making is so important to the Chiefs breaking down the Bristol defence. While screens can often look like set plays, it's actually a quite basic structure offers the ball carrier a number of options. It's just up to him to take the right one. First off, let's look at Steenson on the first screen and we can see he has three options. Hill coming onto the short ball, Slade on the slide behind, and then Witten as the late trail runner. So which is the correct option for Steenson? If we watch what Bristol defence do and the timing of Steenson's pass, we can see that PC is held on Steenson, but that both Palamo and Hurrell have sat down on Hill's line and that Hull is holding with his head turned in to watch Witten on that tracking line inside Slade. That leaves Slade the best option, especially with the midfield holding and leaving that space wide. Steenson takes it and Exeter are over the game line, and have turned the defensive line side on, which now means all those defenders are now working in isolation, disconnected from their inside support. As Exeter come back the other direction, we again see Steenson offered two options. Dennis acts as the lead runner, and Slade and Witten as the sliders. He comes out the back to Slade, who now in turn is presented with another series of options. Witten is on his shoulder for a short pass, while Cowan Dickey is slightly wider. As Slade comes around the corner, he draws Sorensen, which takes PC inwards, and he bites in on Witten, leaving Cowan Dickey the best option. He gets on PC's outside, and again gets through the first contact, turning the defensive line inwards. Now Exeter are eating up the yards and going to fall 50 metres in one phase. And as we again recycle, Chudley has a run back against the flow and he's offered two options, Waldron on the short ball or Slade sliding in behind. Waldron is well marked, so he actually goes behind him and then uses the second runner, Salvi, as a new lead runner for Slade on the slide again. Again, defender's shoulders are turned in, so he goes behind to Slade, who comes around the corner and realising it's a 5 versus 2 moves the ball into the final defender's lane, trusting Turner and Woodburn to finish. It's lovely unselfish play from Slade, who for me is rapidly turning into the perfect second playmaker. It's going to be interesting to see if he can force his way into the England squad, splitting up that Ford Farrell access that was so successful in Australia. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube.